Hi, I'm Joe, a Warsaw-based shooting instructor. Machine guns and open-bolt weapon systems have unique handling characteristics that may not be immediately evident to the average firearm owner, characteristics that can pose significant safety hazards when handling such weapons. The proper handling of machine guns and open-bolt weapon systems is generally not taught to civilian firearm owners, and reliable information is generally difficult to find. In Canada, for example, the Canadian Firearms Safety Course and even the Canadian Restricted Firearms Safety Course conspicuously omits any information on automatic weapons and open-bolt weapons systems for some reason. <coughs> even though these used to be legal once upon a time, or so I hear. I mean, what happens if you're walking down the side of the road and you find that general purpose machine gun that fell off the back of the army's truck last night, as you do? You should at least have the knowledge to be able to safely clear it as you honorably carry out your civic duty and return the wayward weapon to your local MP detachment, right? In Poland, Converted automatic firearms are widely available and very popular, so that even with a sports license, it's possible to own machine guns and submachine guns that have been very minimally modified to fire in semi-auto only, but are still otherwise open-bolt firearms. As an owner of such systems, I've had many questions about the proper procedures for handling such weapons, but couldn't really find the answers I've been looking for. With that in mind, and my own experiences of working with these guns as a shooting instructor, I decided that if you want something done, you must do it yourself. So, I've decided to produce my own series of instructional videos to assist other owners of such systems in the safe and reliable operation of these guns, so that no one else has to end up like the way cool bro we see here. In today's video, I'm going to discuss the process of clearing machine gun stoppages by taking immediate action. First, I'll describe some of the unique characteristics of open-bolt firearms, as well as the dangers that hang fires and cook-offs can pose to the operator. I'll conclude the video by describing and demonstrating the different philosophies of taking immediate action to clear machine gun stoppages, so stay tuned. Shooting machine guns is easy. Cock the bolt, load the belt, point, and fire. However, if you work with machine guns for any length of time, you'll quickly learn that the real art in operating a machine gun is being able to quickly diagnose and remedy any stoppages or failures you might encounter, the key being to resolve the problem before your entire position is overrun by enemy forces. Many machine guns typically fire from the open bolt position, which provides a unique set of considerations the operator must take into account that are normally not encountered when operating closed bolt firearms. In a closed bolt firearm, the bolt is in battery with a cartridge in the chamber, and ignition of the cartridge only occurs when the trigger is pulled, which causes either a hammer to hit a firing pin, or releases a striker, which then hits the primer. On an open bolt firearm, the action of the bolt moving forward into battery is what causes the cartridge to detonate independent of the trigger being pulled. This means that in the event of a stoppage, by simply allowing the bolt to go into battery will cause the cartridge to ignite. Thus, when working to clear a stoppage, it is absolutely imperative that the operator ensures that the bolt is restrained to the rear of the gun while working on the weapon. Hickok 45 made a nice video illustrating this concept on an open bolt submachine gun, so be sure to check out his video, which I've linked to in the description. Machine guns present certain dangers to the operator that are not as prevalent with non-automatic firearms. The most serious threats to the operator are those of the hang fire and the cook off. A hang fire occurs when the trigger is pulled and the primer is ignited, but the powder inside the cartridge ignites after a delay of possibly up to several seconds. Therefore, 
If the operator clears the round immediately, without allowing sufficient time for the round to detonate safely in the gun, the round may detonate on the ground next to the operator, causing injury. Looking into the matter of hang fires, the most common anecdotal experiences I could find seem to be where the cartridge detonates within one second of the trigger being pulled, producing a cadence similar to that of firing a flintlock. Hang fires occurring longer than that are extremely rare occurrences, with the most famous possible example of such an extreme hang fire occurring in the death of Colton Bushi. Link in the description. Compare the spent 762 Tokarov casing from Gerald Stanley's Tokarov pistol to my photo of typical spent 762 Tokarov casings, and it is clear that something very unusual happened when that round went off. Hang fires are most typically encountered when using very old ammunition from far off parts of the world that was likely stored under adverse conditions for many decades, as was precisely the case with Gerald Stanley's ammunition, and is quite a rare occurrence when using quality factory ammunition. A cook-off occurs when a cartridge is stuck in a hot barrel long enough that heat from the barrel alone causes the cartridge to ignite. This is why many machine guns fire from the open bolt position so that a cartridge is not kept in the chamber between bursts to avoid the risk of a cartridge cooking off. The open bolt also aids in cooling the barrel by allowing air to flow through between firing. Also note that cook-offs are of an even greater concern with closed bolt machine guns such as the M2 Browning. Cook-offs are especially of concern when a cartridge is stuck in a hot barrel. A barrel is considered to be hot when 200 or more rounds have been fired through the barrel in two minutes or less. These conditions require the operator to react in specific ways to avoid a cook-off or to mitigate its effects. The most famous internet example of a cook-off is that of an ISAF instructor clearing a stoppage on an MG3 at Camp Leatherneck in Afghanistan. From the time that the stoppage occurs to the time in which the round cooks off in the face of the instructor, causing the case head of the cartridge to rip through his cheek, a full 15 seconds elapse. Had the instructor carried out the proper procedures, or if he left the gun with the bolt and battery pointed downrange, the round would have detonated harmlessly. Taking the dangers of hang fires and cook-offs into consideration, in the event of a failure, should an unfired cartridge be stuck in the chamber, the operator has a very specific window of time to clear the problem, simultaneously allowing both enough time for a hang fire to safely ignite, but acting before the round is able to cook off. This period of time is measured in seconds, but how many seconds? In civilian shooting, we're taught that if you hear click, but don't hear bang, keep the gun pointed down range for 30 to 60 seconds. Of course, this is fanciful thinking in a combat environment. Therefore, in a combat environment with a hot barrel, the operator should adhere to the following guidelines. Wait 5 seconds before taking immediate action. Complete immediate action within another 5 seconds. If the problem cannot be resolved in time, the gun is placed out of service and left to cool with the bolt in battery and the top cover closed before taking remedial actions. An additional danger that operators should also be aware of is the danger that an exposed chamber presents to them. Whenever opening the top cover and lifting the feed tray, the operator should physically turn or lower their face away from the open chamber to avoid injury in the event of a cook-off. This is one of the benefits of being able to load a fresh belt with the top cover closed as on the MG42. So here's a little memory aid to keep you from sticking your face into the chamber of a machine gun. Think of the open chamber as a cat's anus. When the cat points its anus in your direction, something bad is about to happen. Thus, 
when clearing the machine gun, do not look into the cat's anus. Soldiers are trained to take immediate action, which is a set of reflexes designed to quickly remedy most stoppages an operator may encounter without seeking a cause. However, immediate doesn't exactly mean immediate, as the operator should wait five seconds to allow a potential hang fire situation to safely resolve. In my research, I have encountered two techniques for performing immediate action, the first being the POP procedure described in U.S. Army manuals, the second being a procedure described to me by a former member of the Canadian Armed Forces. The POP procedure described in the U.S. Army manuals is as follows. POP stands for Pull, Observe, Push, and Press. Pull and lock the charging handle to the rear. Observe the ejection port to see if a cartridge case, belt link, or round ejects. Ensure that the bolt remains to the rear to prevent double feeding if a round or cartridge case is not ejected. If a cartridge case, belt link, or round ejects, push the charging handle to its forward position, take aim on the target, press the trigger. If the weapon does not fire, take remedial action. If a cartridge case, belt link, or round fails to eject, take remedial action. Here's a demonstration of this procedure. A former member of the Canadian Armed Forces explained the procedure that he was taught by the Canadian Army, which can be summarized as cock, open, sweep, face down, close, fire, cock, open, inspect, rectify, and explain the process as, you're lying behind the machine gun, weapon in your shoulder. A stoppage occurs. You cock the action to the rear, open the feed cover, and sweep the belt off of it, and close the cover. You've effectively removed the feed path at this point, but there may be a round in the chamber still that failed to extract. You take aim and fire the action. A round may or may not fire off. If it does fire off, it will likely cycle the action and eject, or be fired off and now be rendered an empty casing. If it does not fire, either there was no round at all, or a faulty round or mechanism. In the latter case, the next portion of the drill will give you a second opportunity to extract and eject the round, preventing a cook-off in your face. You cock the action again, open the feed cover, then lift the feed tray to inspect the chamber. There should be nothing. In the event of a broken extractor, and you see the base of an unfired round, you immediately close the feed cover and wait five minutes for the gun to cool before moving into secondary actions to clear the stoppage. However, if the chamber is clear, you reload, ready, and carry on engaging your target. For those wondering what you do in combat as five minutes is a long time, the gun has experienced a mechanical failure and is out of the fight until the extractor is replaced. Remember that you have a total of five seconds to execute this procedure. As I mentioned previously, the operator must make sure to keep his face away from the exposed chamber, so when carrying out the sweep component of the procedure, keep your face clear of the chamber. If you're lying prone, you can lower your head below the gun, and the drill is executed without looking at the gun. Here's an example of what that looks like on a Canadian Army training exercise, followed by my own demonstration of this procedure.
To evaluate the merits of these two techniques, let's return to the video of the ISAF instructor and the MG3 cook-off where we can make a number of observations that can help us to evaluate these two approaches. First, we see a large pile of spent casings under the gun, suggesting a large volume of fire and a hot barrel. The operator fires several bursts, and the gun stops. The operator tries to pull the trigger again, and nothing happens. The instructor takes over the gun, opens the top cover, and removes the belt. Next, he pulls the charging handle back. Judging by how freely the charging handle appears to move for the first half of its travel, the bolt was likely not in battery. When he pulls the charging handle all the way back to the rear, a spent case does eject. He stares into the chamber, and the round cooks off in his face. We even see the projectile hit the ground in front of him. So, what do I think happened? It appears that somehow the gun had a live round stuck in the chamber with a spent cartridge stuck on the bolt head. I suspect that the gun failed to eject the spent casing, perhaps because of a weak round with insufficient power to fully recoil the action, or maybe a dirty gun, and when the bolt tried to return forward, it still managed to strip around from the belt and load it at least partially in the chamber, with the spent casing jamming the bolt and stopping the firing cycle. If the operator had used the pop procedure, he would have pulled the bolt back and likely ejected the spent cartridge, thinking that the stoppage was clear, he would try to fire again, but the gun would try and strip a fresh round out of the belt and into the chamber, which already had a cartridge stuck in it. If he had used the Canadian procedure, he would have cocked the bolt to the rear, ejected the spent casing, opened the top cover, and removed the belt, closed the top cover, and fired the gun, at which point several things could happen, depending on the nature of the stoppage. The cartridge that was stuck in the chamber would either fire, or perhaps it was a dud. Either way, the danger of a hang fire has passed. If the round fired, the action may or may not cycle. If the round didn't fire, the round may or may not be extracted when the action is cocked a second time. The operator opens the top cover, lifts the feed tray, and inspects the chamber. If he sees a live cartridge stuck in the chamber, he quickly closes the action, puts the bolt back into battery, and leaves the weapon pointed in a safe direction for between 5 to 15 minutes while the gun cools before taking additional action. Again, because this entire process was completed within 10 seconds of the round entering the chamber, the danger of a cook-off is minimized. Therefore, in my opinion, the procedure taught by the Canadian Armed Forces is the better procedure, as it is more comprehensive and can safely accommodate a much wider cause of stoppages than the U.S. Army's POP procedure. And now you know how to clear a machine gun stoppage using immediate action. In my next video, I'll discuss the process of remedial action and how to resolve problems that cannot be cleared through immediate action. So be sure to like, share, and subscribe, check out my machine gun instruction playlist, and follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash survivewithjoe. Also, please leave your questions in the comments, and I'll try to answer them in a future video. Thanks for watching.